Hey everybody and welcome back to another YouTube tutorial. My name is the name here and today we'll be taking a look at just improving our landscape material, uh, replacing the colors with textures and we'll also be laying the groundwork for future texture endeavors like adding normal maps and all that good stuff by separating everything in material functions. Now I'll explain material functions when we get there but of course this is just the intro so without further ado let's get into the video. So last time I left off we actually weight mapped our entire landscape and we also gave it a basic color um, but we do want to replace these with textures now because um, not every single game wants basic colors for the landscape. Um, so the first problem we have is we want to apply texture to the landscape, but we also have another problem with a look at the sun now. From a truth angle, you'll see that a landscape looks more like plastic in the way it reflects light. And that's what we're going to be fixing by going to our landscape material and adding material functions. Um, but before we get into that, it's important to note that I have bridge open here. I'm using three mega scan assets. I'm using the eroded sedimentary rock, the forest floor, and the wild grass. And you can access bridge at any time by clicking on content, and you'll see Quixel bridge. So I already have it important. So if I go ahead and look, I have a mega scan for the surfaces, and I have all three important. So if you don't, I'm um, just get that ready because I'm just going to go ahead and start with setting up the landscape material. I'm going to set it up in a weird way. Um, I'm going to set it up in a way you might think it should be, but then I'll tell you why it's not really a good idea to set it up like that way. So what we're going to go ahead is we're going to go ahead and delete the three colors. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and open the content browser, which in my case doesn't want to open in the M landscape material, so I'll just go ahead and uh, not save any changes there. I'll just go ahead, go to my content, double click M landscape, and yeah, now my content browser works into my material, which is pretty cool. I'm just going to go ahead, go to make a scan, surfaces, and what I want is I want to take my forest floor, uh, the one marked with D is diffuse. Uh, if you're not using mega scans, there's a big chance this is called color. So yeah, it's the color or the diffuse texture. Any of those works. So I'm just gonna go ahead and delete all three of these colors. And I'm gonna go ahead and plug the texture sample for the dirt in the layer base layer. I'm gonna go to surfaces. Gonna go get my wild grass. Take the one marked with D, which is weird. It's it's showing up. Oh, okay, yeah, it should have just updated. <laughs> That's a weird bug. Anyway, plug it onto layer 1. And then we're just going to go ahead and surface this eroded sedimentary rock. Let's go ahead, drag that out, and plug it into layer 2. We're going to go ahead and type in landscape layer chords. What this allows, it allows you to scale the texture on a landscape. So it's not like a normal texture chord and it's, it's a bit different. And this is what we'll be using later on to scale our texture to help with tiling. Uh, and now to fix the um, kind of plastic looking terrain, we're just going to go ahead and right click and search for a constant. And that's just a constant. We'll just use this kind of like a float. It's also important to note the shortcut is holding one on your numeric row above your keyboard. Just uh, right click not right clicking, just going ahead and left clicking once. And then you have two, we're gonna go ahead and plug in the roughness, and we're gonna go ahead and plug in the specular. The roughness should be one, uh, but the specular should be zero. And that really has our entire landscape ready to go. It's just gonna go ahead and compile shaders, which it loves to do. Um, we're gonna have to set with that for quite a few episodes, but you'll see it's tiling quite a lot. Uh, so let's just go ahead, go to our landscape, and just for now, change the mapping scale on the landscape chords to a value from 0 to 10. 
That's what's gonna scale up our textures until we work on reducing the tiling. We're just gonna go ahead and save packages, awesome. And here we are. So here we have less uh, tiling. Uh, of course there still is tiling, but it's less noticeable for now, it's working for now. And uh, our landscape isn't just reflecting like some piece of plastic. Uh, but we still have one problem, and the problem is the way this is set. Up. Um, the problem is, is usually we don't use one texture for material. We use multiple. We use normal maps, uh, ambient occlusion maps. Um, there's a few maps you might want to use. Uh, I can think of four on a landscape texture. So that means that if you want to go ahead and add all the textures you want, that means we're going to be adding 12 texture samplers which will clutter up our main view here and makes it kind of hard to just read a main material and understand what's going on in it. So we're going to be using material functions and they kind of work the same way as blueprint functions. You call them from a main graph and then they get executed and then they give a result which can be used to calculate subjects in the main graph. So that's pretty cool. I'm going to go to new map, I go to our content folder, right click and go to material and textures. We're going to go ahead and click material function, scroll down so it's in view. I'm going to call this MF for material function. And then you just want to go ahead and call it landscape base layer. We're going to be having one for each of these. Um, it's just easier to work with that in that way when we actually implement parameters for our main material. And we're just going to go ahead, open up the base layer. And I'm just going to go ahead and dock it. Now, this might look like a normal graph, just in one difference is that we don't have this uh, landscape material. We don't have the material output. We only have a result node. And this result can really just carry any result we want, so it could technically uh, carry an entire material attribute. Uh, but for now, we're just going to go ahead, and because this is the base layer, we're going to go ahead and add dirt to it. So we're going to right click and create a texture sample parameter 2D. This is important, we want this to be a parameter that's adjustable from a material instance and a normal texture sample doesn't really allow that. So awesome, we're gonna call this or um, this is our diffuse texture, so I'll call this the diffuse texture. Okay, and what we want to do is under the details panel, if you didn't have the details panel this entire time, it's under window details, but in the details panel of this diffuse texture, we just want to group this, and what this means is this will add it to a group in a drop down which we can adjust in the material instance whenever we want. We're just going to call this base layer. This is grouped under the base layer. And while we're here, we're also going to change the sampler source from texture asset to shared wrap. Now, if you're wondering why we're doing this, is if we go to our main landscape material, you'll see texture samplers 4 out of 16. Now, we actually have a limitation with DX11, and even earlier versions of DX12, where we can only use max 16 samplers. About 2 is used for rendering purposes, so that means if we had 12 textures here for only 3 layers, that means we had about 14 uh, texture samplers. And uh, that sounds great, like, oh yeah, we didn't go over 16, uh, but that means you can't really add more layers than 3, which isn't really good. So what this allows us to do is this allows multiple textures to use the same sampler, which allows you to have way more textures than you could have with the old system. So yeah, we have this set up, the fuse texture, and for now let's just go ahead and plug in the diffuse texture. Um, if you're having errors here where it's just going on like, oh no, you don't um, know or something weird in the stats panel, make sure you have a parameter texture here. 
Uh, but if I go ahead and save this, and I go ahead and take my texture sample, uh, right click, and I'll just go ahead and use a function, material function call, and then it's going to be on the last material function you created, but you can just click this drop down and choose any one you want, but this is the one I'll be using. I'll plug the result in layer base layer, and while we're here, just going to change the diffuse texture in the material function to our uh, dirt one. So this was forest floor, floor, forest floor, yeah, and the diffuse texture, and that's perfect. Just save for that. And now it's going to be the same in our main material graph. Uh, if we go ahead and click save, we're still going to have a problem here, which I'll show you how to fix now. Uh, you know, okay, well, the problem isn't really obvious in this case, but if I quickly go ahead, go to my landscape editing tool, go to paint and paint a dirt patch, and wait for it to compile that small section there, uh, just giving it its time. If it compiled once in a section, you can paint it anywhere at least, so that's great. Okay, now that it's done, you're gonna see a problem where our material doesn't really have a consistent texturing with the rest of the landscape, where if we look here, it's actually texturing, uh, or not texturing, tiling way more than the others. And I'll just control Z in that because I don't really want to paint now. Uh, the problem is, of course, we haven't plugged in our landscape UVs in here. So let's talk about function inputs. So if you right click and type in function input, then we can input multiple um, types of variables we want. So we can go from scalars to spools to textures and everything that we want. But in this case, we'll be using a vector to. I'll just go ahead and plug this into our UV. If you're wondering why I'm using a vector 2, it's because conveniently the landscape chords is actually a vector 2. So what we can do is if we had this input in, the input name, we're just going to go ahead and we're just going to name this the landscape core bit. Yeah, just landscape chords is pretty good. Input landscape chords and perfect. We can go ahead and save and apply that. It's gonna say it has compilation errors. Uh, and we can see why it has compilation errors is because it doesn't have any landscape chords inserted in the main graph. You just wanna go ahead, plug that in, and boom, now your problems are solved. So I can go ahead and save, and now in our main landscape material, we can go ahead and save and apply. And now we practically have slimmed down our landscape base layer uh, with some regards. Of course, you might not see the slimming amount right now, uh, but in the future, you'll definitely see it. Uh, but let's go ahead and do this for the rest. So what we want to do is we're just going to go ahead and create a new, actually we can go ahead and duplicate the material function. We can go ahead and rename it uh, to our, not base layer, but our landscape layer 1. And we can go ahead, open that up, go to the diffuse texture, and under the group we'll just rename it from base layer to uh, layer 1. And then we're going to go ahead and replace the default diffuse texture with uh, grass or wild grass. And then we can go ahead, save and apply, go to our landscape, delete this, and we can just go ahead and call a material function call. And here we have our layer 1, plug in the result, and our landscape layer chords. And then we are just going to go ahead, save, and then we're also going to apply that, and we're just quickly going to do that uh, with the other one. 
Of course, it's gonna be colored a bit weird because it's still using our dirt texture, uh, but we're gonna be fixing that really soon, so don't worry, I'll explain why it does that very soon. Anyway, we're just gonna go ahead and go ahead and duplicate our base layer again, and I'm just gonna go ahead and rename it, and instead of base layer, of course, it's layer 2. And we can go ahead, open that up, and we can just change, click the diffuse texture, uh, change the group from base layer to layer 2. And you should see, yeah, it's marked as layer 2 now. And yeah, this is perfect, we're just gonna go ahead and change the diffuse texture from frog's floor to our sediment rock. So not all these, we want the sedimentary rock. We can go ahead, save, and we can make sure that our landscape layer 1 save, then the base layer, and then we're just gonna go ahead, remove this texture sampler, um, material function call, and there we have our landscape layer 2. Awesome, now I can go ahead, plug in the landscape chords, and I can go ahead and save, and apply this, and then everything's gonna be dirt. Oh well, Enter, that's really confusing. Why did you show me this? This just ruined our landscape. Well, don't worry, because if I click, right click my M Landscape Material and click this Create Material Instance, then I'll just not click off of this because I'm not going to rename it. When I open up the Material Instance, then it's a completely different thing. Actually, wait. Each one is nothing is new marked under these rows. They have the base layer marking, that's a bit weird. I'll just quickly look at these, these are marked as layer 2. Um, let's just go ahead and rename these. So landscape layer 2's uh, diffuse texture, it'll be layer 2 diffuse texture. Then the landscape layer 1, we'll just go ahead and layer 1 diffuse texture. Um, base layer will be... Um, the view texture will be base layer diffuse texture. We're gonna go ahead and save and apply that. Save and apply that and save and apply that. And there our landscape is fixed. So that's an important thing to note is that we can't name each of these um, one name because in the main graph each parameter has to be a different name. And now we know that, at least. <laughs> so I mean, you have learned something new together. What's awesome about the material instance is that we can go ahead and just change these out so you can create multiple landscape textures and just use them together. Uh, but now we have this set up, and you might not understand how this is somehow uh, better than the other choices and I can understand why you don't feel that because we haven't showed the power of what this can achieve. So in the next episode I'll actually show you how we can use multiple types of textures like normal maps and other maps together using material attributes so we can actually put our material functions to use. Uh, but for now Thanks for watching guys, if you like the content please subscribe, hit like if you liked the video, hit dislike if you didn't, uh, please tell me why you disliked the video, I'd really like to improve my channel, it's just an important thing I wanted to note, and also thanks for watching, Good night, everybody.